apologize in advance. I think this is probably going to be longer than it needs to be, but that's the way it goes. Sorry. <clears throat> <clears throat> and I have a cough, so all my apologies are coming now. All right, so let's talk about MIDI stuff on the MS3. Sorry, I'm trying to get the camera just right. There we go. All right, as a brief overview of what we're going to talk about is controlling more than four devices with the Boss MS3 and also just making it easier to save presets and to save scenes of presets instead of <clears throat> all of the programming that's required <coughs> excuse me with your MS3 All right, so I have five MIDI devices. This is channel one, two, three, four, five. And on the disaster area, that would be A, B, C, D, and E. Um, by the way, this is a quick connect. It's the new uh, thing from disaster area. Let me just tell you kind of what's going on with that. So I have a MIDI cable coming out of the MS3 and it's going into the Q-Connect. And then from the out of the Q-Connect goes into the timeline and then it goes up to the specular tempest. <clears throat> and then the Q-Connect <clears throat> excuse me, has eight quarter inch outputs that'll go to things like Chase Bliss, Strymon, Maris, uh, Alexander, Empress. And so that's what that looks like there. And that's just got quarter inch cables going out. Makes it super easy. There's eight outputs and then each one can send on the tip and the ring at the same time. So technically you could use TRS uh, insert cables and each output could go to two pedals for a total of 16, 17 on the USB and and 18, or 18 and 19 coming out of there. So to do what I'm about to talk about, you would have to have a Q Connect. Disaster Area is now selling these for $199 on their site, and it's like the biggest bang for the buck in MIDI land lately as far as I'm concerned. And I hope I can show you why. So, I could show you what it takes to program an entire scene on an MS3, but all of you are well aware of what that takes. So I'm not going to waste time doing that, but it would take several minutes. And then you would only be able to control the first four or any, any four. And at first I wasn't bothered by that because I was like, well, I'm only using like, you know, two or three or four MIDI pedals at the same time anyways. But then the issue comes with, say on preset one, you're just using like these three. And then on preset two, you're using say these three. Well, you would want these two to be turned off when you're going from this preset to that preset. So that's five assigns no matter what. And you've already gone over your limit of four so let's just look really quick at so I have two blank patches here and let's say preset one I want these three so what the Q connect does is I can go to each device scroll presets and then uh, activate uh, bypass and engage pedals as well and then there's these presets
that got scary. So. I don't have anything programmed there yet. Let's just look at a quick way that we can program this. <clears throat> so I'm going to program preset 1. And see how that starts at 0? That's important to know. And that's going to be important here in just a second. The commands to send that start at 1. So 0 is 1, 1 is 2. I almost feel like I should have like written a way to explain this a little better, but let's just start working. So what I have to first do is scroll to the preset I want to assign. This is going to be preset 1. Now I'm going to enter the devices. So we we're going to go these three. Now, if I wanted to do that on the MS3, I'd have to program in MIDI channel 1, preset 1, send it, save it, all that stuff, audition number 1, and go, no, that's not the one I want, and then program number 2, and send it, and no, that's not the one I want. Here, I can very easily just cycle through all of my presets and try each one all by itself. I'm going to turn this amp down because it's going to go kind of crazy. So let's just say, and I'm not going to try to make something that sounds super great right now. Let's just say I do number one. Call that good. And then I can go over to the second device, which is the Brothers. I can scroll through sets there. I'm just going to pick something kind of benign. Okay, that's great. And then I can go to the Condor and start trying presets on that. And let's say that I wanted this one. So let's just say this is the preset I wanted. Now that I've entered all that in, oh, and let's just say that this was on and this was on. I just turned it off a second ago. So let's say for this preset, remember we wanted these three on and these two off. Now I just go to my next device, which is the timeline, disengage it, you see the light go off, and then I hope the specular tempest works the same way, yeah, so the light went off there, so now we're just running these three, I would have had to have programmed all that individually here. <clears throat> now we're going to go to that preset, and I'm just going to save it. So that scene of all five pedals, these three engaged, these two disengaged, have now saved on that scene. So now if I get out of here and go back in, there it is. Now, the cool thing is, is on the MS3, now all I have to do is program the MS3 to kick this guy on. So now when I go into this other patch, it's going to probably kick something crazy on. Yeah. Kick the bleep on. So, we're in number three, and now we're going to edit this guy. I'm going to turn this off for just a second, because it's kind of driving me crazy. Actually, I'm going to turn all these off. You already saw that working. <clears throat> all right. So on the MS3, which is arguably harder to program than what you just saw here, that was really easy to just scroll through, bypass, engage. I didn't have to program any CCs or PCs or anything. It's just all automatic. Now on the MS3, all I have to do to get that to work is go into Edit. Might as well zoom in a little bit so you can see what's going on here. You're all familiar with this procedure anyway, but. All right, so I go into control. And here's all of our MIDI, one, two, three, and four. So nothing's assigned. I'm just gonna go into enter, and then the um, Q connect is channel 16. So we just go 16. And then remember when I said that 0 is 1 and 1 is 2. It's just you have to just add 1 
on the MS3 because the QConnect presets start at zero. I don't know if there's a way to change that, but so that would be zero and that would be our number one right there, even though it says two. Um, and everything else is done. I'm gonna save that. Okay. So now when we look at, I don't know, a lot of you that are unfamiliar with this procedure right now are probably going, what the hell, this seems complicated, but it's really not, trust me. I just, I might not be very good at explaining this. So we go to this one that kicks on that stuff that just happened. This one kicks on that stuff. Now this guy, when I hit three, it'll go number one here. These three will be on, these two will be off. Exactly that preset we just saved. So now let me see if number four, and yeah, number four seems to not really have any assigns. So now let's just, I'm gonna quickly, like kind of without explaining a lot, just bypass these three and engage these two and save that to number four. Let's see if I can do that kind of quickly. So first I would want to go to number two, which turns on a bunch of shit, because I don't have anything programmed there yet. Which is kind of weird that it kicks stuff on, I don't know. So now I have number two. Let me go up to A. And that's engaged, that's bypassed. Oops, let me hold. So that's bypassed. Ah, I keep forgetting to hold. That's bypassed. I'm only having to kind of do this twice because I already bypassed everything. Now the timeline, I could go, all right, let's see, which one do I want? Let's say I want my analog, which is that one. And then we'll say that on the Specular Tempest, I wanted the 70s plate. So that's already programmed, ready to go. And then we would save it right here. And then on the MS3, I'm not going to zoom in, but I'll talk you through it. Go into control, MIDI patch one, channel 16. Whoops, I'm on number three. Let me go to number four. Edit, control, channel 16. Two would actually be three. That's done. So I've now done five MIDI assigns in that short amount of time. So one is this vintage amp, and it's not connected to the MS3 or to the Q Connect. It's just this is this one is like manually in the MS3. This one is lo-fi guitar. And then here's the two we just programmed. First one is these three guys. And then the second one, these three turn off. And we got the dark analog with the plate. So even if I had like 16 MIDI pedals on here, we could be doing controls with the MS3 and this thing acts, you know, like uh, like a MIDI controlled uh, looper or MIDI controlled, um, you know, there's a couple devices on the market. Uh, Morningstar has that one, I forget what it's called. <clears throat> Disaster Area sells one. And it's like audio loops. Well, this is kind of the same thing, but with MIDI. So, uh, let's see, is there anything else I can cover on this? Maybe not. But any, any of you that have done 
the assigns manually on the MS3, you know that this is a way shorter. And also for auditioning your sounds, I mean, you just can't even, there's just no way you can like scroll through presets this quickly on an MS3. It just does, I mean, MS3 doesn't scroll. You have to like manually enter it in yourself. <clears throat> you can literally sit here and go through all your brother's presets. find that one you like. Paired with whatever you like on your Condor or whatever pedals you're running. Save that as preset two. And now that'll be recalled here. Anyway, that all sounds kind of funny together, but you get the idea. I guess that's it. Alright, 17 minutes. Yeah, we're done. <laughs>